Hey there, sorry for the delay, I'm here. So, welcome to Guru Session number 10. We've already done 10 of these. Uh, and uh, good morning, Pacific Coast, United States. Good afternoon in the East Coast. Good evening here in Europe and uh, England. So, today we're gonna try and dig into how can we use Isadora to support remote performance? Obviously, that's a topic that is on everyone's mind. We're going to be trying to figure out how to do performances like that for at least the next few months, it's clear, right? So I wanted to think about how Isadora could support people in doing that kind of work. Um, today is a bit of an improvisation. I've got other people who are gonna join me, thankfully, from remote locations to actually take part in this. We've had a tiny bit of rehearsal. Hopefully it will go fine in terms of just getting connected. We're not really gonna do a show, but we wanna make sure that the connections work. So there's three main things I wanna go over today. And that is one, so the week that I took off of doing Guru Sessions, I spent programming madly to make a new actor for Isadora called the Screen Capture Actor. Now you need to download the guru10.zip file, which I have at the top of the chat. If you don't have it, you should get it because this part you should follow along with me. Uh, and we're gonna go through the process of installing the plugin because you have to actually put it in the right place. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, which is also good to know how to do. So we'll spend some time on this new plugin and then I wanna get into using Skype as a way of bringing people who are performing remotely into Isadora. Now, I know a lot of people are using Zoom and we can actually think about how to use this new screen capture actor to maybe work with that. The problem with Zoom is that it doesn't have its own way of outputting that Isadora can take in. The thing about Skype that's cool in a recent release is that they added NDI support. If you don't know what NDI is, it's a protocol for sending video not even just between applications, but across potentially the, the web. It's actually normally used for very high quality communications on a very fast network in a studio. But in fact, Skype provides this NDI output and Isidore, support, Isidore supports that as an input. And you'll see how we're gonna use that. And I've got some people that are gonna help me uh, show how that works, okay? And then the final thing is, and this part I can't totally show you. We're gonna talk, I gave a, a set of instructions in that download file about how to use OBS, which is the software I'm using right now to broadcast to you, to send Isadora's uh, stage out to YouTube or Twitch or any of the different things that it supports, right? So that we're gonna kind of just discuss. I'll show it, I'll show you, you'll see it in action. But that you can't, I can't actually do because I'm using OBS to do what I'm doing right now, right? Okay, so that's what we're getting started with today. And I think that um, we might as well go through the process. No, I'll, I'm gonna say a few words about remote performance just in general uh, to give you time to make sure you've got that download file that's at the top of the chat. And, uh, and then I will, we will install it. One last uh, thing, again, just uh, stating our convention. So if you have a question, please type at sign Troikatronics and then question in capital letters. That helps me see it over here in the, the chat window over here to my right. Or you can also say at sign Troikatronics feature. Probably there'll be a, a several of those today because we're gonna see what we can do with Isadora, but I'm also here to start a conversation with all of you about what do we need to do because I am ready to sit down and code like mad to provide the tools that we need right now to deal with the situation that we're in in terms of how we're doing performances, right? So that dialogue can be part of this, yeah? And so if you have ideas or things you think would be a great feature, put them in the list. Uh, our good friend Lucas is with us today. He'll be noting all of that stuff and making sure that we have it logged so we can talk about it as a team and think about what we're gonna do, okay? so. Um, before we begin, and again, last reminder, go to the top of the chat and get the zip file, the guru10.zip, and download that. Uh, you don't need it actually for what we're going to do. You just need it for that plugin. I'm gonna, we're going to create the file together today. Uh, so the, the only stuff that's in there that you'll load as an Isadora file is a test for doing this OBS setup, right? Okay. So I just wanted to mention, um, let me go over here briefly. 
to uh, YouTube. So I wanted, you know, the beginning of my artistic career, the first place that we had the opportunity to perform in Los Angeles was a place called the Electronic Cafe, which was run by Kit Galloway and Sherry Rabinowitz. And I just wanted to mention, because I they are artists who are actually too, they should be much better known than they are, because they have essentially invented the notion of telepresence uh, as we know it, although Kit himself hates the word telepresence. So anyway, um, but they did a project in 1980 where they got a hold of a NASA satellite. They actually got a grant from NASA to use their satellite and put a video camera and a video projector and a microphone in a storefront in Los Angeles and a video camera and a projector and a microphone in a storefront in New York and used the satellite to create a live feed between the two locations. And what was brilliant about their idea is that they just turned it on and they um, did not tell anyone that it was going to be there and they just let it evolve organically. I'm just going to jump through. This is obviously very, this documentation which you can find on YouTube. And you can see a hole in space LA NY 1980. You can find it. Um, these are some clips from what was going on. And what's fascinating about watching this piece is that what it, you're already seeing it in day three when people are you know 20 deep because they found out what it was what's really beautiful is to see the moments when people discover it before they even knew what it was because back then the thing is that you couldn't even conceive of this as an idea right because people that was not the internet didn't exist we couldn't do what i'm doing right now with you right so it's worth taking a look at but the thing I, the reason I bring it up, aside from the fact it's an important historical piece, especially g given what we're talking about today, um, it's, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't switch the thing again. See, now you need to see me switch the video. Let me switch so you can see this web page I'm looking at. There we go. Okay, so th there we go. Perfect timing. Day one. There you get to see the two feeds, and it's totally unannounced, as it's saying there, and people are starting to find out about it. All right, and that's the video. You can go search for that on YouTube and take a closer look. But the thing that Don uh, Stapiello and I learned from Kit and uh, Sherry and doing that work, we were in there trying to make performances that were completely fixed because that's how we were thinking as composers and a choreographer. We made pieces, we designed them, and we did them. What Kit and Sherry taught us was this kind of work doesn't make sense unless it's an improvisation. It has to be like a telephone call or now a Skype call or a, a, a Jitsi call or whatever. It's like two people are talking to each other and you actually don't know what they're going to do. That's where the energy comes from it. It doesn't mean that you can't do a show that's completely fixed, but I'm not quite sure why you would do that. If it's completely fixed, maybe it's good just to play an edited videotape, yeah, or a video. So that's just one thing to think about is like, what are you going to do with this and why are you going to do it? And how does looking at this technology address something about where we are right now, right? Um, I just think that that's something conceptually to think about as we jump into this, because uh, in the end, we have to think about new ways of performing and new meaning that comes from this kind of performance where people are watching on a computer or maybe in a small group and they're not in a theater with you. That's an entirely different thing, yeah? So anyway, that's Hole in Space and just a little bit of uh, uh, wisdom that you know we gathered from two uh, wise artists. And if you like, you can go find the video and check it out or read more about the Electronic Cafe. Uh, Kit and Sherry really were pioneers and they're under-recognized for their excellent work. Okay, I am going to close the YouTube window and here's Isadora. So now you should have all have the uh, zip file from the top of the chat, right? And let's install the plugin. So if you unzip that file, let's look at that. There is a folder that says Screen Capture Plugin. And you'll see here that it's the screen capture, IZZ, IZZ plug, and then under Windows, that's the Windows version, right? So you need to use the right version. And so what you're going to do in Isadora is you're going to go to the Help menu and you're going to say um, Open Plugin Folder, Troikatronics Actor Plugins, okay? So Help menu, Open Plugin Folder, Troikatronics Actor Plugins. And so now it has opened that folder where all of these extra plugins can be placed. And you're going to copy the screen capture plugin from the right platform, Macintosh or Windows, 
and drag it in there. Now, I've already got it there. I don't need to do this, but you're going to drag it into this Isadora Plugins uh, X64 folder. Once you've done that, to be able to use it in Isadora, you're going to quit Isadora, like I just did, and you're going to start Isadora up again because that's what's going to allow it to see the plugin that you just put in there. And so now, if everything has worked okay, uh, you're going to type screen or the first words of screen and that actor will appear. Now, another caveat could be that some of you have crashed your computer just now. Hopefully that's not going to happen, but this has not been tested. I made this last week. It has not gone through the normal procedure where the team looks at it and we try it and we gave it to some beta testers for a few days. It seemed to be doing okay, but I just want to warn you, we're going to Produce these plugins quickly. I should have added the word alpha onto this. I will before I put it publicly in the forum tomorrow. So that you know that this is something that's just bubbling up right now. And you're one of the beta testers. You're going to be the people checking this out and also giving us feedback, right? So that's part of the game right now is that I'm making these plugins in response to the situation we're in. And we're kind of skipping some of the things that we do to test them to make sure that they're robust. Now, I hope that it'll work just fine for you. That would be uh, my uh, very, make me very happy. But beware, you could lose your file. So it's always good if you, uh, you know, if you have the fully enabled version of Isadora, like I'm just going to save this patch. Well, actually, I want to open my other one. So let me just open my other one and put it in there. But you should save your file because if it does happen to crash someplace, unfortunately, then you always have the autosave file sitting right next to it and you can get that, right? Okay, so I'm going to assume that you all have that plugin installed now and I'm going to have to make the window a little bit smaller here. Let me put me on the screen. I think I'd like to have you be able to see me and... There I am. Okay, good. So, okay. <laughs> See, already somebody said on Windows, 170% load. Yes. We're, there's some things about optimizing this for the video cards. We're going to talk about that. It, uh, one user had the same problem, one of the beta testers. He restarted his computer and then it was fine. So, just keep an eye on all these things. Let's see how it goes, all right? But I'm going to add this screen capture actor here. All right, so the first thing that's going to happen is uh, I'm just going to go through these inputs so you understand what they do. Let me just go ahead and add a projector, right? And show now I go to the output menu and I say force stage preview so you can see the stage. And there what you see is the desktop or the display that is in front of me right here, right? That's the, the one with Isadora on it and the computer desktop. Okay, and you get this interesting little feedback as it goes in the window there, right? Okay. Um, yeah, see, I'm hearing different things from different people already. Some people are saying they have 260% load. Other people are saying 2.4. Like I said, we're going to work all this out as we hear back from you and find out like what video card configurations change this, whatever, right? Okay, so... Stick with me here. Let's at least learn how it works and then we'll sort of get into performance and we'll be working on this obviously in the next days, okay? And weeks or whatever. So it's set to display one. If I go here and I change the number on the display to two instead of one, now you're seeing over there, you see your own chat, you see the OBS window, you see the other display where I am uh, that I'm using that I have in front of me to be able to see the other stuff, right? So that's the first function that it does, is it simply allows you to switch from one display to the other and just capture the whole thing. So if you have a window that's going full, um, full screen, then that's one way to do it. You just pick the display and you're going to get it coming out here and that's that. You're done and you've now got a live feed of whatever is going on in that window. So you can see here that we're seeing in the stage here uh, we're seeing the, the desktop, right? And so if I go in here and I double click, right? You're seeing all the stuff that I'm, oh no, you can't see it because the stage went behind. Well, anyway, you get the idea. It's a live feed, right? Okay. So, um, all right. So now 
What I want to do is show the next feature though is this window stuff here. There's two window inputs. And to do that, I hope that I still have it open. I have a small window, yes. So I just have this Giphy. I just went to a, the page here uh, that has GIFs on it, right? That's just so it has some animation and some moving images, okay? Now, first of all, you actually don't always know, especially when you're using a browser, what the name of that window is. It's interesting, if I make a new tab and I just go to Google, let's say, yeah? That window is now called Google, has the word Google in it. And when I switch tabs, it changes the name of the window to Giphy. That's really important to understand uh, that in these browsers, often they are updating the window name dynamically as you change from tab to tab. That's something that you have to watch out for. Now, a lot of windows, like a Zoom window, this would be the perfect thing to use with a Zoom window to capture part of the Zoom window and bring the video in to Isadora. Maybe that doesn't change the name. But browsers, that's one thing you have to watch out for, okay? So, so now, if I go here, now we're back here, we see this, we see the whole display still. If I click where it says window list, I'm gonna get a pop-up menu of every window that the whole thing sees. And some of them are kind of strange, like the battery extra, there's actually like the little battery indicator up in the menu is it's in fact its own window, right? But you'll see that one of them is Giphy, search all GIFs, make your own animated GIF, la la la. And by the way, I say GIF, I don't know, it might be GIF, I don't really know what's right, okay? But we'll leave that debate aside. So if I choose that from the pop-up menu, voila, you only see the browser window now. And so it's only capturing that part of the display, okay? So that's one way to do it. But choosing it from this menu, if it's, again, if it's a normal window that doesn't change its name, that's probably gonna be just perfectly fine, right? But for instance, Facebook, I mean, I don't know if you'd ever wanna be capturing Facebook. Every time you get a notification, it changes the number in the title of the window and suddenly it might not be capturing, right? So I think that this window list, even though that's one way that you can pick the name, like I could pick the Skype window here that's appearing, that's one way to do it. But in fact, I probably would prefer, once I've seen the name of the window, to not use that menu. Now we're back to just using the display, but I'm just gonna go to window name and type G-I-P-H-Y, just part of the name, and I'm gonna click outside of that, and now you see that it found it. So the way this works is that if there's no window name in either of those fields, it's gonna show you the display, right, that you've chosen. If you use the window list, the pop-up menu, it's gonna have the exact window name and it's gonna use that. But of a higher priority, if you type part of a window name in the second input, that one that says window name, this one right here, right? Then it's gonna find that window and it doesn't have to be the whole name, it can just be a small part of it and as long as it matches, the first window it finds that matches, that's gonna be what it captures, right? Um, <laughs> hard G GIF. Okay, I'm starting a fight in the chat. Okay, don't worry about the name of the thing. The image, the image, right? All right, so, um, all right. So you can see that it's capturing that window, all right? But we don't really want to see all the tabs and the user interface elements at the top of the window. It's giving us the whole window. And to make that more convenient, we have these four inputs at the bottom that allow you to crop whatever image you're getting by simply increasing these numbers. So I'm taking the crop top and I'm just scrolling up here, scrolling up, scrolling up. I'm gonna keep scrolling till I'm there. So I've gotten rid of all that user interface stuff. And in fact, I'm gonna do the bottom too. All right, a little more. A little more, and then I'm gonna do the left side, crop, 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 and get rid of the scroll bar the right side. And now I have the important advice for today that we all already know, stay home, right, okay? But using that crop function, I was able to bring in the edges and only capture the portion of the window that I wanted to capture, right? So you can do that at any time and just chop that off and really get the part that you want. So that's very convenient 
to get rid of those, you know, borders and user interface elements and things like that. Okay, so that's what the crop function does. Now, by the way, that works also if you're just using a display. If I go back here and I remove the word Giphy from this, so it's capturing the display again, and I do those crops, you see that now it's just cropping the entire display. So that's even another way, although not as reliable, because if you choose the window name, it's going to track the window if you move it around or something like that. But you can actually also crop the display just as easily. Yeah, so I'm going to undo that because I want to get back to the one window. OK, so so that's great. It works and you're able to capture the window and just the one part of it. Right. OK, so that's in a nutshell what this does but I want to point out a couple little pitfalls you might run into so notice that if I change to Google it's still capturing it's doing part of the window right because I we, we were zoomed in on that one gif but it's still working in fact it found it and that's because it uses the name to locate the window, but then it kind of grabs this reference to it. It says, okay, I know which window we're talking about. And I don't need to know the name anymore. What? Um, uh, I just did it. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to interrupt there to answer a question. Well, let me finish this. Okay. So it's, it's uh, seeing the window, but if I leave the scene and I come back, it's not going to find the window because it, it was, um, it's looking for Giphy, not Google, and the name of the window is Google. So when you initialize this actor, when you come into a scene, it uses the name to find the window. From that point on, it has a reference to it, and even if you change like tabs like that and the window name changes, it'll hold on to it. But, um, so now uh, you can, uh, uh, you can you can just know that you really need to have that window name stay consistent if you really want to find it and even if I switch to Giphy now see now it found it because the name became matching and it did all the cropping and it all fit now I'm I think that hopefully makes sense let me stop because a lot of things just flew by questions the crop is only if you have a window chosen doesn't work on full screen capture that's a comment um, not for me if I go to, uh, if I, again, if I remove Giphy, so it's capturing the whole display, let me go to zero, right? And if I type in 500, 500, oh, that's too much, 250, 250, 250, 250, you can see that it's, for me anyway, it's cropping the display as well as the window. Um, all right, so I, I, that should work. If it's not working, you know, that we've got, you know, there's a forum post, right? There's a for I should have put that link in there. Let me go ahead and just put that in right now. Um, whoops, wrong program. So this guy, if you are having, if you find that it's not working as I'm describing today, then I want you to go and add those comments and uh, things that you found to this forum post. All right, Jane, Jamie says it worked for her now. So, okay, maybe let's see what was going on. All right, so there's the forum post for this guru session. That's the place to talk about all the stuff that maybe is going right or going wrong or what you've come up with, right? So hopefully that crop works. Um, uh, question, the crop is only if you have a window chosen, doesn't work on full screen capture. Jake Whitland the same. Okay, I don't know if it started working for you, uh, Jake, but I think that really does work. Um, if it doesn't, you can let us know. I mean, again, we're all gonna be trying this and testing it. I'm sure there'll be a lot of feedback in the next week. I'm committed to getting this really working as well as I can possibly get it working in the next week as I go on to some other things that are gonna be part of this effort to support remote performance. All right, um, all right. So I think that part's good. Does the window name care what browser you're using? No, it's any window that you want to have. Like, so for instance, if I go here to the finder, let's go to the finder. So here's the folder called Guru Sessions, right? And this will allow me to make another example. 
So if I go here, I set all the crops back to zero, and I type window name guru, you see, well, I created a feedback loop. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually this window over here. Let's, ho let's hold on. Let's make this tinier and move it over here. Oh, no, that's not working. It's capturing the stage. That, didn't, that doesn't work. I can't use that window name, right? It's actually capturing Isadora's stage and it's doing feedback. Here, uh, tutorial media. Let's use that folder instead. Okay, so I go here and now I type the word tutorial. There. Now I've just got that finder window, right? So it's not about the browser, it's about the window name. And it could be any window from any application, could be QuickTime Player playing a movie, for instance, or anything you can think of. As long as that window has a name, it's gonna choose that window. So hopefully that makes sense, yeah? Uh, okay, now, and then Jake brings up the next point. You got to keep the window on top. So here's what happens. I'm going to move this tutorial media so it's halfway uh, on the Isadora window, and then I'm going to go back. And what you see here is that you only you're actually seeing the Isadora window obscuring that tutorial media window, right? So when you're using the normal mode. It can only capture exactly what you see. And that means if one window is on top of another one, you're going to see that in this output, OK? Now, there is another mode to do this, but it has a performance penalty. That's what this other input that we haven't looked at is called window CPU mode, OK? If I go to this and turn it on, now I can see the window. But you're going to see the load go up. But it's even actually worse than that. If you go to the activity monitor, you'll see the CPU usage go up quite a bit. This is a much slower way of grabbing the image where it actually does it as a, a CPU-based bitmap. It means it can get it even if it's behind another window, but it has a big performance penalty. So, um, so you can use this mode if you really have to, but I really don't recommend it because it's really going to slow things down for you, especially if you're capturing more than one source, right? So uh, think about that before you use that. It's much better to get that window on its own part of the screen, use a second display, put it over there so it's not obscured, and to leave the window CPU mode off. Right? That's because then it's coming directly from your graphics card, and that's about as fast as it's ever going to be in terms of pulling that image in. Okay? So we can sit here though and we can do a couple of windows. If I move this over here again, now we can see the whole thing. And I can also go here and duplicate that and type Giphy. And now I've got the Giphy window there at the same time. Of course, we can't make anything out anymore, but if I make them a little bit smaller, and I guess that's obvious, but everything that I'm doing, it's just a video signal now, right? It's just like any video signal in Isadora. We can have these as uh, independent images that we can put anywhere we want. If I wanted even to go so crazy as to open up IzzyMap, if you don't know that, don't worry, I'll just, I'll just do it. But I open up IzzyMap and I go here and I do some crazy keystoning on that image. So there's like, it looks like I'm seeing the the finder window in perspective. It's just a video signal like anything. So, <clears throat> so um, basically, you know, it's, you can do anything you would normally do with video. That also means if you have two scenes, so for instance, if I go here, I'll make another scene, paste this in, and I'll reset it so it's filling the whole image again. Reset to default values. Uh, oops. Um, Okay, so there's the tutorial window in scene two, or the second one of these. I go back to this one. There's the one I had before. I'll put a three second cross dissolve on that, and I'll hit the space bar, and now I dissolve into that other image, right? So everything that you're doing with the signal coming from the screen capture, it's just a video stream, just like any other video stream in Isadora. Okay. Okay, um, I'm seeing some comments here about display one and display two and there is something going on uh, about 
when you're on Windows, this is something we have to figure out and write about. When you're on Windows, you may be using the internal, there's, you know, there's often two GPUs and you may do the main display on your computer on the internal one. And then for the external monitors, it forces it to use the, um, the high performance uh, uh, graphics card. When that's happening, you can't actually get the whole, you can't get both images in the same program because it kind of like separates everything. That's something we have to look at. I have to get on a machine that actually has that capability because my MacBook Pro that I run Windows on doesn't do that. So keep it in mind. You may not be able to capture from both screens. Write about this in the forum post though because uh, Ryan Weber, our person who's the Mac, I'm sorry, the Windows person on our team, we're gonna be digging into this you know, again, the whole philosophy of doing this, I know it's not perfect. I know that things like this are coming up, but I'm going really with this virologist uh, guy that I heard speak early on during the whole pandemic saying speed trumps perfection. And right now, because people are making performance, my thing is we're going to put these out as alpha things with issues, discover what the issues are, fix them as fast as we can, because it's more important that people get them and can start thinking about how to create so you can make art with it not in, in three months when it's too late, but tomorrow, right? That's the way I've been thinking about that. Okay, so question. Um, uh, is this similar to Siphoner? I would say it replaces Siphoner, yes. And the other thing is that one user was saying that Siphoner will not run on Catalina, but this runs on Catalina. So I think uh, the answer to that question is yes. So you wouldn't have to worry about using Siphoner anymore. You could use the screen capture thing. Um, so, and then another question, if I had a network feed coming into VLC, would it, best, would it be best to use this or just siphon it in? I think siphon is probably easier because it has a name and you just route it in and it's, you know, this, it's, it's probably lower overhead than capturing the screen. So I would say yes, siphon it uh, if you can but this is a way to grab something from VLC. I mean, mostly this screen capture is about programs that don't allow you to do it any other way, right? Okay, yeah, thank you, Sam. That speed trumps perfection. Look up that quote and watch what this guy had to say. It was a very inspiring speech he gave. Um, it was very, very compelling. So yeah, so sorry for the problems, but like I said, speed, speed trumps perfection, but we're going to fix them as we hear from you and find out what the problems are, okay? So that's basically it on this screen capture topic, and I wanted to see, I'll give a little moment here to see the, the let the delay go and see if any more questions come in, but um, please post your results in that forum post, and we will follow up with them and see how it's going, okay? Um, uh, Sam, if you need to, I'll post the, I'll send you the link later. <laughs> um, uh, so, all right, that's the new screen capture actor. So hopefully that's interesting for you. Hopefully it solves some problems, at least for anyone. I know that one user in particular was trying to use Siphoner on Catalina and couldn't do it. I think that problem is now solved by that. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, does Zoom accept Siphon Streams? No, I, I looked all this up today. I was trying to find out about Zoom, about Jitsi, which I've been using also lately because it's completely open source and it has encryption and stuff. Um, as far as I know, Zoom has no capabilities for NDI or Siphon or Spout. There is nothing there yet. That's why I'm not going to do it today. Um, that's why I, I can see that, by the way, my stream is kind of pausing. I maybe am having some bad connections today. Hopefully you're still getting what I'm saying. Um, anyway, uh, I, no, uh, uh, Zoom doesn't have that capability. And right now, Skype is the one that I found had the most options for that. So that's why we're going to take a look at it in here in just a moment, right? Um, okay, I think we're good with the screen capture actor. And so now I'm going to insert a new scene. And let me look at my configuration here in OBS so I can see what I, you're seeing here. Okay, good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I can put this down here again. All right, so I'm going to switch to go in, and now we're going to do some experiments using Skype. And to do that, I have our dear friend Bone Map, 
who is in Australia, so literally halfway across the world, and my lovely partner who is in the bedroom. So we have a quite a, a large distance and quite a short distance, but we are nevertheless going to connect. So I'm going to go over here and you can't see it, but I'm going to try now to call them both and see. Uh, now, just beware, we're going to try and keep our, uh, they're going to try and keep their feeds uh, muted unless I ask them a question so we can hear what they're doing. But there is going to be some extra noise probably, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. I'll kind of speak up, but it may get a little noisy here as we try to do this, right? So let me just look at this again, make sure it's good. Okay, good. So here we go. Let's place the Skype call. You're not seeing that, but I am. And let's see if we can get them both online. Ring the group. Yes, I hear something. There's any. That's one. And hopefully Russell will be coming soon. Yes, I see Russell and Rebecca. Okay, so I see them over here. And um, even, with the, even with the sound muted, it's a little bit loud. So hopefully that, that isn't going to get too annoying for you all to bear with me here in doing this. Yeah? And uh, just tilt my camera back a little bit. Oh, no, that's using the other camera. Sorry. I'm using a different camera need to check this okay good all right so they're with us and so you know I realized um, this plugin you also need to install I should have included it with the download but let me just go ahead and show you where to get it quickly so if you go to troikatronics.com and plugins the plugin you want here is the NDI Watcher, yeah? And uh, you can download that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this because probably it's gonna be a bit crazy if you all try to Skype right now to do this. It's probably good just to kind of watch me doing it. But later, you should get this NDI Watcher actor if you don't have it, okay? All right, so with that in mind. Um, now, uh, so what NDI is, I said at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the talk, but I just wanted to say that uh, it, it's a protocol for sending video, usually over a very fast Ethernet connection, very high quality actually can do uncompressed video, I think. But we're not using it that way, obviously. We're using it to get a stream in from another piece of software, kind of like Siphon or Spout, if you know those technologies. The only th thing, um, uh, the only thing with that is that. Uh, I'm seeing my uh, stream pausing. Okay. Uh, the only thing with that is that um, uh, Siphon, of course, is super low latency, super low uh, impact in terms of performance. Uh, uh, NDI is a little bit more, right? But nevertheless, it still is the same kind of idea. So I'm going to add an NDI watcher. It's the NDI watcher beta. It says beta, but I think this is pretty stable. I think we can take the beta off of this. We said that to, again, warn people that things may be kind of, you know, dodgy or getting started. And I'm going to connect that to a projector. But the main thing is we have to pick an NDI source. Now, the thing that's beautiful about this, if you have a, a, the plugin URL, you just have to go to our plugins page. I was just there. Hold on. Troikatronics.com. Trigatronics.com slash plugin. There. And so it's Trigatronics.com slash plugin. I'll paste it into the chat window. Yeah. And then you just find the NDI Watcher plugin down there. Okay. All right. So when you have these NDI programs running, they create several sources and they're all available and they kind of like just talk to each other and they know that they're there. So all you have to do to pick one is click here where it says NDI source. And you see there, there's the name of my computer, the desert, and there's several feeds. Let's take a look at that. The one with this really long name, that's any who's in the other room. There's local, that's me. There is Russell, Russell 
who's in Australia, and also Russell is sharing his screen. So that's the second one that he's sending to me over uh, Skype. And then there's the one called Active Speaker. So if you know Skype and other programs, whoever's talking, they get the focus, their camera comes up. If you choose Active Speaker, it's gonna choose the one who's speaking. So that's what you usually see in the Skype window, right? But let's start by saying hello to Russell and his friend Rebecca. There they are, I think you can see them. So I just chose that. So that's coming from Skype. And the thing that's great about this is that each stream is completely individual. That's what I think it's a very powerful tool is that it's not like it's all combined. You can actually get each stream separately. So Rebecca is there. Russell's in the foreground, I think. I don't know if you can see him. Rebecca is a, is a dancer, so she's actually going to move for us a little bit, which is super nice. That makes me happy. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good point. I did not talk about the fact that you need to enable NDI in the Skype preferences. I guess I should show that. I think that's okay to do. Well, you know what? I'll have to show it at the end because I don't think I can show it while it's running. Good point, though. Thank you for reminding me about that. You have to enable NDI as an option, and you have to have the very, very, very latest version to do this because it's a brand new feature, right? Okay. So... We see Rebecca there, and we've just got a video stream that we can use for whatever, right? And so now what I'd like to do is I will add another NDI watcher and another projector. And I will now choose this one, and you will see any Brandner in the other room doing a kind of hand puppet. So I'll take the intensity of Rebecca and Russell and turn it down. And there's any with a very glowy angelic light right so now I've got the two streams coming in at the same time I think Annie's trying to watch Rebecca and imitate that movement so there we go so we've got the two streams coming in and you can see them at the same time right so um, so that's basically it's that easy right in terms of getting an image from Skype it's super simple yeah and um, so I'm going to, but what you might want to do is set this up for a show. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate that scene a couple of times because it actually works better if you have all of them ready to go because it takes a moment to acquire the NDI signal when the actor is initialized. But if you're going from scene to scene and they're all there, they will kind of all stay initialized, right? I'll, I guess I better show you what happens there. But let me just d demonstrate that. So I'll go to this first scene, and I'll turn down the intensity of Russell and Rebecca, and there's any. I'll go to the second scene. I'll turn down any. So we see just Russell and Rebecca. And then we're going to do this hybrid version in the other one. And maybe I'll even, no, that's fine. I'll just blend it together, OK? So now, if I go back here to this first scene, like I can put a three second cross dissolve. So I just went down here and I typed three seconds. We don't see Rebecca and Russell, but that in that next scene, if I hit the space bar, you'll get a smooth transition because it's not trying to start up. Watch what happens if I go back. I'm gonna delete the one that's Russell and Rebecca, right? So that one's no longer there. And you'll see when I jump into the other scene, there's gonna be a blackout for a moment because it takes about a half of a second to acquire the signal. So here I go, I'm gonna try my three second crossfade. And then you see it jump in there after about a second, right? So I guess what I'm learning about this too is that a best practice is to have all of them in there like that or if you, if you wanna make sure it's seamless. So if you wanna do a transition, you can, right? So here we go. And then I'll do another one second transition to give us the combination of the two, right? And then let's add one more scene. And I'll just copy and paste this. And, but now I'm gonna switch to Russell's shared screen, which is also Rebecca, I guess. I don't know if that's what he was meaning. Oh, there it is. Okay, he's, he's, he's actually got, I think, the Isadora stage there. Can you show us the other image? Yeah. So he's got an interactive puppet that he made that I think is tracking his face. Yeah. 
And so now we have that creature and maybe it's fun to put any, uh, since she's closer, to put her face on with the puppet and maybe they can coexist in the same space a little bit. All right. So, um, all right. That's basically all there is to it. When it comes to doing a picture, it's pretty simple. The only thing you have to watch out for is this thing I was talking about, is the fact that it takes a second or so to acquire the NDI image. That's just the way it works. When it doesn't have it kind of hooked up, it has to go searching the net, find it, do some stuff, configure, and it takes a moment, right? So if you really want to have these seamless transitions, um, uh, then you need to sort of keep them a lot working, you know, set up in the scene so that they will be going in and working together, right? And I'm going to just turn any down a little bit there so we can enjoy Russell's beautiful animation. All right, there's some questions. Let me take a moment to look at those. Would there be any disadvantage to using virtual stages rather than having a separate NDI in each screen? Well, the virtual stages, remember, that's for NDI output. That's how you would send Isidore's output as an NDI feed to something else, right? Here, we're taking NDI in, so we have to use that actor, actually. We wouldn't be using the virtual stages for that. Now, you could, however, maybe this is what you mean. Maybe I'm... I'm um, uh, making a mistake. This is where I might be making a mistake. Uh, maybe what you mean is, could we like just set all those up to have them going to virtual stages and then pull it from the virtual stage? The answer is yes. And I could see this one uh, good way of working maybe is that you have a background scene, which I think some of you know how to do. Look at the open sound control tutorial last week, I, or last two, two days ago, I talked about having a secondary background scene. But you just have all your NDI watchers there, they're rendering to virtual stages, and then you just pick those signals up as you go down. If you're new to Isidore, you don't know what a virtual stage is, don't worry, you can just do it this way, but that might be a really interesting way to work, okay? Um, Okay, the embassy is exactly what I was hoping for. Well, good, I'm really happy that it's doing something that we can work with, that will work for you. How do you send an Isadora window to Skype? Well, uh, hey, Bone Map, maybe you can unmute. Can you tell us how you did that? Let's see if you can hear me. Uh, I think he can hear me, but maybe he didn't. Uh, I think that he just used the screen sharing feature in, um, in Skype to share that screen. Um, let me see if, let me ask him in the chat. Let's see if he sees that. I'll look at the other questions in the meantime. Um, so anyway, there is no NDI input, Jamie, to answer your question, how do you send an Isidore window to Skype? There is no NDI input on Mac OS. There is only NDI output. So, but what you can do in Skype, you can just use the screen share feature to say, I want to capture this screen or this display. And um, no, uh, and you can just do it that way and feed the screen directly from Skype to someplace else. But a related question, Jurian just asked, doesn't Skype also have an NDI input? Not on Mac OS. On Windows, there is a virtual webcam that receives uh, NDI. And on Windows Skype, you can use the uh, virtual webcam as a means to get NDI into Skype. So there is a way to do it on Windows, but you have to use this virtual webcam. And I don't know how much extra overhead that's going through to kind of simulate being a webcam and doing the other stuff. Probably it's better to capture the window using the screen capture feature in Skype to grab it because it's doing what my screen capture actor is doing. It's gonna grab it from the GPU, right? So um, let's see here, the other questions. Uh, uh, question, sorry, meant to help with smoothness. I'm not sure what that means. Um, okay, I, I'm not sure what Andrew's question there means. You can clarify if you see this. I added a link to your support article on NDI Skype to Isidore to the Guru Forum post. Great if you mentioned that. 
Oh yeah, I um, I wrote uh, a little how-to about getting Skype. Uh, doing what I'm doing with you here today. There's a little uh, uh, knowledge base article that I prepared that goes through the steps you need to go through. We're going to be adding to that. Like I want to add the thing about how to use that virtual webcam uh, uh, in Skype. So uh, just look in the forum post about Guru Session number 10. You'll find that link. Lucas just put it there. Um, did you tell how to record these things through Isadora? No, I did not talk about that. Um, you can use the, the capture, I want to turn, let's go back to where we can see Re Rebecca dancing. There she is, okay. And Russell, there's Russell now, we see him. Um, uh, and we can give any a break. Um, so, let's see, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, if you want to record these things, you can always use the uh, uh, record stage, uh, start recording stage after using the record stage settings. Uh, know that on Windows, uh, the codecs that come with the system aren't great for this, actually. And this is something we want to improve. But on Mac OS, it works really well, I think. On Windows, we could stand to improve it. But a little tip, if you, even if you don't have a Blackmagic device, if you install the Blackmagic drivers, you get their codecs, which are actually really great for doing real-time capture. That's one little tip about doing that. But if you need to record the stage, you can use Isadora record stage uh, feature to do that and you would set that up using the record stage settings. I won't go into a detailed explanation of how to do that. I want to do that in its own guru session, but that's the short answer, Eva. Um, okay, going down the questions. Uh, how can you get Isadora stage to Instagram? I have no idea. That is not something that's a really good question. Put that in the forum thread. I don't know if Instagram accepts that right? I have no idea. That's something we, I would really have to look into. I don't know if it accepts. I mean, uh, yeah, because probably that would have to be done with OBS, maybe. Let's look into that when we come to the OBS section. Okay, Troikotronics. If I have plans to always stay active, seen with all NDI feeds, do image correction of each feed to normalize the user actors and call this New York yeah, that idea works. Frank was asking, I, ha I plan to have always stay active scene with all the NDI feeds, so a background scene, and doing image correction of each feed to normalize them so they kind of have the same look. And then he's talking about making a user actor that'll just do that for you. Please do it and please put it on our plugins page. I'm sure people would really benefit from that. Okay. Okay. All right. So... That's how you get the feeds, but what we didn't talk about, and I guess, I don't know if Russell could hear me when I was asking him to, uh, to uh, speak to us about how he shared the screen, but the real issue is audio, because here's the thing, the audio is coming in, you can choose in Skype where the audio is going to go, but you can't do it for each individual feed. That's a global setting. So if you're gonna route the audio to the speakers, then everything that's coming out of your computer, any music you were playing for the performance uh, and the voices of the people speaking are all gonna come out. And worse, excuse me, worse yet, you can't have, you don't have any control over it, right? You can't change the volume, you can't do things like that. So yesterday, I'm just showing this to tease you. Yesterday I started making this so this is going to be, it's going to be the same name as the other NDI watcher when I finish. This is a, a, a version that I made where you will be able to route the audio to whatever output you want, including a multi-channel sound card and to be able to send it to different channels of a multi-channel sound card. So that's something that's going to become possible. And I, I really hope to have that by next Friday or next, next weekend at the latest, right? So because this whole audio thing gets really, really tricky if you're actually trying to control it, what would be really nice is to be able to at least mute it, right? To do that from the computer, not to have to have the performer hit the mute button, yeah? So, um, and by the way, Rebecca, you can relax. Any, you can relax. No need to, thank you for dancing for us. That was really beautiful, by the way. So, um, because I think we're gonna be done with this in just a second. So, this audio stuff is coming, but actually, as I prepare today, I've actually felt really, like, nervous because I realized how complicated the audio part of it is, and it's something that I feel like we, we're gonna work out. 
I did want to say, I meant to say it at the top of the whole session. I think we're going to do this session again one month from now because my idea is to actually develop this stuff, make it better, hear from you all about what you actually need, really have a, a, a lively process, and we're going to do another one on this same topic and see where we've gotten to in about a because I think by then we're going to have some new tools that will make this even more interesting, like being able to, for instance, um, to be able to uh, control the audio coming from these signals, okay? Um, and one of the things that Bone Map showed me earlier, I don't know, I'm going to go to a screen share in case he can hear me. Oops, there's Annie looking at her computer. Sorry, Annie. Uh, here, I'll just... Uh, there. Okay, I'll just take any away. So there's, uh, if you can hear me, Bone Map, what would be cool is if you briefly showed uh, your looping software, the routing software that you got, because uh, I'm just going to see if he can show me that in his uh, feed. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's actually talking, I think. If we could hear his voice, you'd see the mouth moving in synchronization with it. All right. Now, there he is. Uh, what, what would you like for me to... I just wanted um, you to let them just briefly see the user interface of the software you're using to route the audio, if you have it there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I will. <laughs> I really am only seeing you as a puppet right now. It's pretty crazy. Okay, while he's, while he's calling that up, just so you know, again, he's tracking his face and this puppet is responding to his movements and his speaking and stuff. I think it's also even responding to my speaking, but... It's mostly your speaking, that is. Yeah. All right. Well, he'll show that in a minute, but what's it called, Russell? Uh, Loopback. Yeah, Loop it's called Back. Loopback. It's a paid program, but it's a very sophisticated audio routing tool that looks pretty interesting. So I'll just sort of leave this here in case you get the chance to show it, but I want to go on to the next thing here in a minute. So... Um, all right, uh, if, you, if you find that looping thing, you can put it on the screen there, but I'm probably going to go on to OBS now, uh, Russell, and thank you both Russell and Rebecca for everything that you did. In fact, you can leave the puppet going though, because I'll use that as a source, okay? All right, um, so the last yeah, thing. Sorry, I can't, I can't get the window. That's okay, don't worry about it, but just mute yourself so it's a little bit less noisy for the moment. And actually, maybe I can even mute Skype to make it. Can I mute Skype? Hmm. Uh, no, I don't think I can. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just sent Skype to a different output. Thank you for bearing with me with that very had all that hiss behind it because we were using Skype. I think the audio part of Skype is something that really needs to be looked at. It's obviously kind of low quality, so that's something to, to look at. Okay, so the final thing, oh there, I just saw Russell's screen come up. There you can see this user interface here. And maybe if I make this, this a bit bigger, you can see it. So this is the software called Loopback that he's using to be able to route his audio through different things and you see all the connections that you can make there. Uh, it's a paid program so it's not free but it's very sophisticated in what it allows you to do so that's something that maybe is of interest for people that are doing these kinds of remote performances and stuff like that. Okay, All right Russell, thanks for showing that. You could go back now to the puppet because that'll be a nice image to close with for this OBS stuff. So the final thing today is OBS, right? So that's the software that I'm using. It's a free open source software. It stands for Open Broadcasting System. And that's what I'm using to be able to speak to you right now, to send this image, yeah? Um, I'm not going to go through the entire setup procedure. There's just loads of tutorials. I think you can find this information. I probably will put together a, um, a, a kind of a step-by-step -step to really help people that would like to do this for whom it's kind of unfamiliar. But right now, I'm not going to go through it because I kind of can't also, again, because I'm using OBS. But what I wanted to show you is sending Isadora's stage to OBS as an output. So I've still got, I've still got uh, Russell's puppet coming in. That's on the Isadora stage. 
and you can see here that if I switch to that one, which I think is Or try that again. Let's put it back. Okay, I was muted there briefly because the microphone was off in this scene. I just want to make that clear. Uh, so you're seeing Russell's feed. You see the Skype logo. You can tell it's coming through Skype. I guess that's one of the things we have to deal with is the Skype logo being part of this. So I am now sending Isadora's stage directly to OBS as an output, okay? I want to explain how I'm doing that. Uh, I'm going to talk about it for both Mac and Windows because they're different, but I can only show you, obviously, on the Mac. So what I'm going to briefly do is I'm going to go back now to screen capture so like this, uh, if I click over here, yeah, okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the OBS window over so you can see it. Sorry for the feedback. I know that's a little crazy. Yeah. Um, and gosh, I guess it's kind of hard to make out, isn't it? Uh, what you need to look at... Uh, I can't really even show it. You know what? I just have to take a screenshot of it. That's the best way. Hang on one second. We're going to go to the Isadora broadcast. And I'm going to screenshot this window. Okay. And now I'll bring that up for you to see. One moment. Uh, okay. Now I'm going back to Isadora. And okay. Sorry for the slight delay getting this where it is. Okay. So now, if I call this up, you can see the screenshot of, of OBS. Okay. And what I wanted you to see was the part down here. So in this, I have configured a siphon input. So you that's one of the nice things about OBS on Mac is that it has siphon as an input. It's super simple. How do we make that work? In Isadora's stage, if I go to this, sorry, let me do that manually. If I go to the stage setup, yeah, and I let's hide the stage for a second. Here's the stage setup for sta the only stage in the show. Look down here where it says siphon. You see that that checkbox is checked, right? That's what causes this stage to be sent as a siphon output, yeah? And what I, again, is a little hard to show you on OBS because of the feedback. I guess I can show this part. If I close that now, so we have Isadora's stage being sent using this siphon technology, which will send video to another program. If I go and drag the... Uh, OBS window over again briefly. Forgive the feedback, but if I go, well, you know what? I'm just going to have to add the siphon thing right here. Siphon client. Here I say add siphon client, and then in the source, you see that Isadora stage one is one of the sources. That's how I pick it. So I've just added that to this business right here, and now you can see that is now an additional feed inside of this scene, which I normally wouldn't have a siphon feed. So it's really easy to get the image over there using siphon, okay? Now let me go back and get rid of that. Oh, yes, delete that. Okay, and then in terms of the audio, uh, OBS is set up to capture the system audio. Now on Windows, that's easy. You just capture the system audio, no problem. On what Mac OS, it's tricky, and I'm going to show you how I set that up. This is all in the instructions. In the little zip file are step-by-step -step instructions. I did this today on Mac and Windows, getting OBS set up to receive from Isadora. But I'm going to just show you this one trick on Mac OS. So I've now in the Utilities window inside of the Applications uh, folder, and I'm going to open Audio MIDI Setup. And I want to show you this thing at the bottom. That's not normally there. I created what's called a multi-output device, okay? 
You can do that by clicking the plus sign and say create multi-output device. Again, this is all in the instructions. And when you do that, you can make it so that two devices get the same audio at the same time. So I check the box next to MacBook Pro speakers and I check the box next to Soundflower and now those two things receive all of the audio that would normally go to your system. Why do they receive it? Because here, you see that little speaker? That means this is the default output for the computer. That's the sound default sound output, right? And you change that by right-clicking something and saying, use this device for sound output. We're not going to change it now because this is making it work. So why Soundflower and what's Soundflower if you don't know it? Soundflower is an audio driver that, like Siphon, allows you to send audio from one program to the other. Uh, OBS, uh, you can capture audio from Siphon. You can't capture it from the, the system audio, but because we made them the same, we can hear it on the speakers and we can get it into OBS. Again, it's kind of complicated actually. You don't actually need to understand it. If you follow the instructions, and hopefully I did a good job with them, if you set up OBS the way, and I've even got the scenes made for you already, you can just import these scene settings, you should be able to get Isidore's uh, window, Isidore's stage, and the, and the sound from the system all going into OBS so you could send that directly to YouTube, Twitch, YouTube Live, I mean uh, Facebook Live. It does a number of platforms, right? I'm using YouTube to broadcast to you now, but OBS does a lot. And I want you to know that <coughs> we discussed in the team the idea, let me go to where you can see me again. Um, we discussed in, in the team We discussed on the team the idea of getting Isidora to do what OBS does on its own. And I spent quite some time investigating how OBS does this. It's a very complicated process. Maybe if that becomes something super important to people, we could pursue that. Um, but in terms of getting it done, like I said, tomorrow as opposed to in a month from now, using OBS was really uh, the fastest way. And there are other things out there that do similar stuff, but I thought it's free. I found it super simple to get working. I got it working in just about 35, 40 minutes. I had my first stream going on YouTube. I thought it was a really good platform. So again, I wish that I could, I think I need to do a, a uh, an OBS uh, tutorial where I can capture the screen and I'm not broadcasting because then you could see all of the steps and actually get through this. I will probably do that because I think this is an important way to be able to share what you get out of Isadora because of course the beauty of Isadora compared to just your normal OBS or whatever, I mean using OBS directly with a camera like I am now, is that you have all the opportunity for scenes, for controlling where the audio comes in and out, for mixing signals together, for taking this stuff in live from Skype and doing mixes with it. That's a very powerful platform actually when you put the two together, right? So let's see, we have to go back in the chat now to look for some questions. Uh, Question, could you add an opaque layer on top of the live image to cover the Skype logo? Yes, absolutely, you could do that. You could crop the picture to get rid of the Skype logo. Uh, you could fuzz it out with a blur. I mean, it may not be legal to do that. I think that Skype sort of requires you to do that. I don't know. that. I'm So I'm not saying that you can legally do that, but can you do it in Isadora? 100%, you can absolutely do it. I leave the, the lawyer fees to you if you do and they don't like it. Um, uh, what else? Uh, question, why are you using Siphon and not NDI? Because Siphon is lower impact than anything. It's the fastest way to send video from one application to another as long as they are on the same computer, right? That's the answer to that question. Siphon is always superior. You should always choose it if you can, even over NDI. But the thing about NDI is that if I had a computer that was on the same network, but like, I mean, sorry, I don't know if I was clear. Siphon, the applications have to be on the same computer. If I needed to send that image to a different computer, then you can't use Siphon. You have to use something like NDI, okay? So that's, uh, that's the answer to that, that question. Um, okay. 
Um, all right. Well, I'm going to give a few more moments for questions, but that's actually what I wanted to cover today. I wish I could go further into OBS, but really it requires a screen capture. So I need to be able to screen capture, and I think I'll do that as a separate project so that people will have a clear reference about how to do it on Mac and Windows, both. So, but I hope that this is a beginning, like I said. I want to come back to this in a month after we've improved some of the plugins, made them better, received your feedback. One of the things I want to see in this guru thread is what's missing? What's the tool that's not there that you really need to be there to be able to do the piece you want to do that involves having people in remote locations? Yeah. Um, question. Will OBS create a virtual webcam that can be seen by Skype on Mac or is it just for YouTube broadcasts? It is just for YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook Live, that kind of thing. Uh, this question came up the other day, I, maybe it was from you, I guess, but about virtual webcams. On Windows, it seems to be really ubiquitous. Lots of things offer them. Like you'll see in the OBS uh, tutorial that's written out in the files I gave you that you use the Spout, uh, which is the same as Siphon, but you use the Spout webcam to go into OBS on Windows because it, uh, the OBS on Windows does not have a spout input. Again, if you don't know it, spout and siphon are the same. Spout is for Mac. Sorry, spout is for Windows. Siphon is for Mac. So um, anyhow, uh, uh, so, that, so this virtual webcaming is very common on Windows. But on Mac OS, the only one I know is CamTwist. That's the one software that does it. It seems to be quite a difficult proposition how to do it, OK? So yeah, I don't think it does a virtual webcam like that. Uh, OK, can you show how to enable NDI in Skype? Yes, I can do that. I'm going to end my calls. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Annie. I'm going to end call now and go back. So here's the user interface. Um, I just want to, the problem is, is that you can see people's telephone numbers and stuff. I don't know if I can, let me see what I can do here. Maybe. Uh, okay. I think this is okay. I think this is not private information. Um, you go to calling, advanced. And then there's this content creators allow NDI usage. So calling, advanced, and then you just have to turn this toggle button on. It's on right now. This is the on state, right? And you can actually, I see, you can choose where the Skype logo is. So you can put it somewhere else, I suppose. Maybe that's useful. Um, but that's how you turn NDI on is there, OK? Um, OK, can you show how to enable this? Is, question uh, are OSC sending across the web for remote plays yeah like UDP uh, open sound control is normally UDP that's kind of like TCP IP but without the thing that if the message doesn't make it it'll resend it that's what TCP IP does it's an entirely secure pro protocol that ensures the packet either gets there or you get an error if it doesn't get there. UDP doesn't do that. So we would need to kind of set up a method for that. Fred on the, Fred on the forum wrote me about the idea of using WebSockets as a way of communicating across distances. That is something I will look into because that seems like a really good idea in terms of fast, ubiquitous ways to send messages through the entire internet, right? Uh, question. The best to use as output on Windows instead of Siphon. You, and on, on Windows, if you want to send uh, an image from one program to another, you use Spout for anything that understands how to use Spout. That's the best thing to use. Um, it's just like Siphon. It works exactly in the same way. It's also very low overhead and very low impact in terms of performance. So Spout is the thing to use if both programs understand how to use Spout. If not, the virtual webcam that receives Spout is another option. I have no idea if that is uh, how much that affects performance. It's obviously going to be a bit more. Share your screen. Huh? Share your screen. Share the screen. Oh, sorry. Um, all right. I was just alerted that I you did not see how to uh, do the Skype thing. 
So now I have to do it again. Forgive me, I'm interrupting that process. So the answer is use spout. That's the answer to the question. Okay, now I have to go back over here. Here's the Skype preferences. Calling, if you hit on calling there, and then you hit advanced, right? There you see allow NDI usage, and there's the button. And there's also the place where you can choose the Skype watermark. I'm sorry, I, I, I try to do my best as a broadcaster, but I missed that one, forgive me. Okay, that's the answer to that question. All right, you are not sharing your screen. Thank you, Jurian, yes, I know, okay. Uh, everybody's telling me, okay. All right, all right. So that's it then, I think. That's what I wanted to go over today. Unless there's a final burning question, I would just say that we did it. That's a first step. And like I said, in one month about, I want to come back and I want to do this again. And I want to learn from you. Please tell us what is also just feedback, stuff that's working or not working in these very uh, fresh pr plugins. But also, what do you need to work? What's not even there at all that you would love to see? I want to think about this. I can't promise I can do everything, but I will do as much as I can to try and support this kind of work. And so I hope that this opened your eyes to a few possibilities. I hope that you create some performances with some friends, even just as experiments in the next week or two. And um, yeah, that's what I have to tell you today. So as is our tradition, I will leave this on for another 10 minutes so that you can say, uh, okay, yeah, I see that. Um, uh, so, um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. So um, anyway, uh, I hope that that was a good session and uh, give us the feedback in the forum and we will see what happens and see how you can do in the coming days, all right? Thanks a lot for joining. See you next time on uh, next Wednesday for another Guru session. Oh, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get alerts when we're going to do these and you'll always be notified of new content. We do have some new content coming from some of our other guys, okay? All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.